Welcome to the True That Show, a show about lifepreneurship presented with wit, humor, and banter by Deborah Drummond and Caroline Blanchard. A lifepreneur is someone who's living life the way an entrepreneur runs their business. All in. Lifepreneurs are rock stars. Lifepreneurs are people who are brave, who risk, who live full on, who think out of the box, who win this thing called life. Lifepreneurs are around us every day. They are everyday heroes. Join Deborah and Caroline, these two stage-walking women who tell it like it is. You'll learn from the most incredible lifepreneurs who will inspire you to be the best version of you. Now here are your hosts. Welcome back, everyone. So happy to have you back here. Deborah. how are you today? I am fabulous. <laughs> awesome. And thank you for showing up again today. It's really cool. <laughs> so today we have like a really, really cool subject. Uh, well, all of our subjects are amazing and cool because we take the time to pick them and we, we're really always trying to pick subjects that we relate to. And this one is financial empowerment, but I know that we heard a lot of people talking about finances and, you know, how can I help you? But what I really like about the speaker that we have today is she's doing it such in a unique way. Um, you know, she really educates and doesn't influence, and that's her own words. And when she said that, I was just like, wow, I love you already. Because I don't know about you, Deb, but I'm a person, I don't like pressure sell. And it's quite, kind of funny because I've always been in sell. But I'm the salesperson who would tell people, like when I worked at a clothing store, yeah, no, no, this one is not looking good on you. And then I had my manager like, you don't say that to clients. And I was just like, well, she's going to go home and realize she looks silly. So, you know, I wouldn't sell. <clears throat> but and same thing now, like when I go to a mall or whatever, and I'm going to use this example because it's the easiest. <clears throat> but when I walk into a store, you know, when the sales clerk comes right at you and she's like, hi, mom, can I help you? I'm just like, no, thank you. And I turn around and I change store. I love online shopping for that. Like even now though, online shopping, they started to have this chat box popping right away. Like, can I help you? And I'm like, really? No. Um, but some people like that because they will want the clerk to follow them the whole time and pick their clothes and blah, blah. I'm totally the opposite. But I have a feeling you're different than me. So how do you like to be sold to, Deb? You know what? I, I love our differences. I love how we love, you know, but um, I love the word financial empowerment. I got to tell you, that's pretty cool. Um, so I am the opposite. I'm the person that wants, I absolutely, when I walk into a, a location, I'm like, where, where is the agent? Like, where's the agent? Like I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, what is this? Right. There's stores and you know, we all go in them and you're like, um, I can't, I, I need help with that coach. Can you please I love when people are there and at least ask me, right? I'm like, I'm there for a reason. I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to shop or I'm ready to be informed. And so I'm wanting someone to be able to do that with me. I tend to make my transactions uh, a lot by my gut. So if someone came up to me and they were like, hey, da, 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 da. if it was someone that I thought, oh man, this is the person I actually that I need. I'm like, I'll walk all day through that store with them. Not because they're trying to sell me, but they're trying to assist me in my sales decision. Very different. So if someone's coming up and they're like, hey, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, I'm like, I'm looking for a great coach. They're like, we got a sale on an orange one. And I think that it would be fantastic for you. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I want the gray one. You know, if, if someone's working with me, I am all over that. If someone wants to give me the information that I need, I'm all over that. Interestingly, I am, you know, I'm in the sales share business as well. And for me, I'm like, give me the information. Like I want a sales agent that they don't have to know everything, but they have to so believe in what they're doing that they need to, they need to convince the salesperson. So I'm the person that loves somebody there. I'm the person that tells me the information. I love it. Now I don't like people that are moving me quicker to the end of the purchase sooner than I'm ready to go. So if I say, Hey, I need a couple of days to decide. I don't need to have the 
yeah, well, it's not $99. Now it's 49 and it's 39. And I'm going to throw in my, you know, meatloaf with my grandmother. I'm not that person. I'm the person leaving at the end of the conference. If they're slashing the prices on the wall, I don't like it. Tell me what it is. Tell me my value. Tell me what it's going to cost. If you have a promotion or I am all over hearing about promotions or whatever it is, but just give me the information, all of the information and be confident enough to sell me. So that's me, right? So I don't like chat boxes, but I would rather go to someone I know. I am the least, you know, when I hear that 97% of sales on Amazon last year were for Christmas and the Christmas before, I'm like, really? Like, I just buy from people that I know. I made my first Amazon purchase a couple of months ago. Mm. So I'm the, I'm very much the opposite. But what I love about Lee is that she kind of satisfies both of us when I think about it, because she's informative. She allows you your process, but she's there with you all the way. And I've never really talked to anybody that's told me something about, like, she's the person that have told me that I really need to take a look at the orange coach. I would because she knows her stuff and she's gotten the time to get to know me to know that maybe that orange coach is going to be a better product for me in the long run. I was talking with her and she was telling me things about programs and financial things that I personally was, I need to know more about that for myself and people that I know. So I'm so glad we have her on today because I've never heard people talk about the things that she does. So does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, yes. I think that I also realized why I don't like people to come and ask me for help. It's because I feel like if I don't buy, I'm going to waste their time. So I've bought stuff just to not disappoint. And, you know, in the end, I'm like, no, I can't do that anymore. So don't even talk to me because I'm going to have to buy whatever. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's talk about our guest today. Let's welcome Lee Wright. Ali, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. So, Lee, you are in the financial industry, but tell us a little bit exactly what you do. A little bit and exactly does not fit together, but I'm sure you understand my question. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, I'm in commercial finance. I'm a licensed mortgage broker in the province of BC in Canada. I provide um, some interesting value options for business owners um, and Stratacorp financing and goodwill purchases, um, which can enable, you know, people that need some financial support to need some financial advice. We've got access to some great programs that can be real game changers in the lives of people. That's incredible. So, you know, as someone who has um, real estate that is under strata, when we were having a conversation in, I think we were just starting off our conversation about, you know, two women in business. And somehow you talk about strata, my ears perked up a little bit because honestly, as someone who has property, it's like, you just want to go like, you know, and I've got my hand over my ears right now, people, because I'm like, I don't want to read those notes, hear what the strata says about a, this we need or a tree we need removed or God forbid a roof this or a this or that, because you have that. <gasps> You know that panic inside about if we ever came up against a big expense and the strata couldn't cover it and when you started talking about strata I, I literally felt that level of anxiety and we were just having a conversation so can you share this please because that's someone and honestly when I hear because I've been in that position like that oh my gosh if there was a big expense would I have to sell so can you share some insight on that absolutely um, I have access to lenders who will finance up to 100% of a strata's remediation cost, whether it is commercial or residential. So whether it's a, a condo building, which is entirely residential, or a uh, commercial strata, which is entirely commercial and corporate, so office buildings, dentist office, accountants, all those kinds of things, I can get up to 100% financing on any remediation costs of the common areas. So that includes building envelope, exterior patio doors and windows, elevators, roof. Typically, when those expenses come up, a special levy is issued to all of the owners, and it's doable in usually 60 days. I can get financing where strata is the borrower, not the owners. So it's irrelevant whether somebody's behind in their taxes or whether someone's unemployed or whether someone's on fixed income. There is no income qualification process. Strata is the borrower, not the owners. 
And in a case like this, I can help make people's homes safe and help keep them in it. You know, one of the things that I have to say in talking with you that um, puts you at ease, never mind, you have this gorgeous, beautiful, you know, voice that's very melody and makes people feel safe and comfortable. I was like, you know, I could, I was like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe you could be my counselor. No, okay. The, um, um, but one of the things that I think around the area of finances, and I mean, I'll, I'll be completely transparent. Like I came from a place where we didn't have, you know, I always say, I know what it's like to not have. I know what it's like to have. I know what it's like to, you know, be raised by a single mom. I know what it's like to say money doesn't grow on trees, all that stuff that goes through our head. And I actually have had to go through in my life, building my financial self-esteem. There was times where I felt like I was the only one in debt. I was the only one that couldn't pay my taxes. I was the only one that had a credit card balance that was rotating month after month. I was the only one, only one. And it honestly chipped away at my self-esteem. And it made me feel like I couldn't ask questions. Sure. And when you talk about how when people, you know, if you're not paying your child support, we can still help you with that. Like, you know, if you can't pay, not that you shouldn't, you know, that's going to go there. But if people have debt, that there's still resources for them, because I think for me, when someone who's had debt, you feel like you've been cut off from all the advantages. And I don't hear that when I talk to you. Yes. Yes. For strata corporation financing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Strata is the borrower. It's, a, it's an unsecured commercial loan against Strata. Strata is the borrower, not the yeah. owner. And it's funny, I've, I've noticed the misinformation that's out there. And I agree with you, Deborah. I think you're really brave for sharing your story. Um, I think there's a lot of people in your position. I really do. People get ideas. Somebody tells them, somebody I know said this and I'm like, well, I'd never, you know, a, a file I'm working on right now, a client said to me, I'm sure I'm private. And I said, well, why would you say private lender, not an A lender? Mm -hmm. And I said, why would you say that? And he told me, and I said, I don't think you're private. We've yet to get an accepted offer. He's getting out bid right now. So it'll be tough to say, I, I can't say with certainty, but I don't think it's private. And he came to me with that perceived truth. Mm -hmm. belief of his um you know and it's you know there is options out there there is options out there and particularly you know i think there's a statistic of real estate is the biggest investment most people have let's protect it let's protect it you know if you can't get you know the the alternative is for the strata act particularly to my understanding anyways i'm hardly an expert on it but to my understanding is that if it's dangerous in need of remediation and strata can't get the necessary three quarters vote, it can go to an adjudicator and the vote is pushed through. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it occurs anyways. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one thing that I want to touch on that, uh, you know, Deb brought up and we brought it up a little in pre-interview but basically what Deb is talking about is the stigma around finances. And you know, like if you ever bankrupt in your life, you may have bankrupt when you were younger and you made a wrong decision or you were not um, advised the right way or stuff like that. But these things, um, you know, follow you in a way that even when it's done, it's not really done because I love what Deb said, the financial self-esteem. It's something we don't even talk about. Yeah, but there agree. are people that will not ask too many questions because they don't want to ha you know, have people dig in their past. Even if they're all clear right now, they don't want to have people dig in their past because they're ashamed of whatever that happened. And I've seen it like over and over again. Um, so what I love about you, it's one thing that you said, you said, you know what, I really want to bring autonomy and dignity to my clients. And you're not talking about, you didn't say that after I said someone back bankrupt, you just said that as a very general statement. And geez, I wish, I wish that the financial world would be more like that to really associate, you know, financial success or even for some people, putting $10 in saving is a success. 
financial period associated with dignity and autonomy at the same thing that we, we consider it in other phases of life. But can you touch a bit on that? Because I gave you the name of Mama Bear, but <laughs> you know, because I really, really, it really um, impressed me that you put that into your work. Like it's integrated in your work, it's you. Sure. Um, and thank you for the kind words. Um, you know, people have said, what is this? They won't answer your phone on your way up to the top. But once you get to the top, they're calling you. Mm -hmm. You Right, that comparison. What I, I offer um, arranging financing for goodwill purchases. Now, goodwill is an intangible asset. It's when there's a leased office space or a leased retail space and there's no collateral for the bank. There's no security for the bank. Those types of purchases are essentially a book of business. You know, a pharmacy purchase, there's no collateral there. Um, and some of those pharmacies can go for millions. Um, a healthcare provider book of business, a dentist retiring, and he or she wants to sell his or her practice to a junior dentist. Well, that junior dentist may have just graduated medical school and doesn't have a strong down payment or any two years of income. Um, they just finished medical school, you know, in those high achievers, professionals, perhaps an insurance brokerage, you've got 50 agents working under you, maybe even a mortgage brokerage, an investment advisor's book of business, lawyers, that type of thing. Um, I can get up to 100% of the purchase price of that business. And some of them are in the millions. They're very significant amount of money. So, you know, there's two conversations that perhaps a young professional could have with his or her parents or relatives. You know, mom or dad, thanks for putting me through law school. Um, I need to buy a book of business and the bank wants your house as collateral. Or mom and dad, thanks for putting me through law school. I just bought a practice. Let's go out to dinner to celebrate. The dignity and the autonomy of that young professional, they are on their way to the top. They are. They're starting from the bottom and they get to purchase their business in their name with no help from anyone else if that's what they choose. That's incredible. I got to ask because um, you're so big hearted with your work. Um, and I, I think that you obviously clearly are a big hearted woman. I know that this is, this is a, a newer career for you. It's within the last 10 years of your life. So how did you come into this? You know, how did you come into this? Um, I came in through opportunity. Um, I had worked in parks and recreation for 25 years as an ice skating teacher um, and worked with children for that entire time. Um, I had two goals in life. One of them was to get a university degree and to buy a house. And I'm the only person in my family that's done either, and I've done both. Um, and after then, I, I didn't really have a goal. I was just sort of treading life. And uh, an opportunity came up. Someone I know was working in finance and wanted to make a change and wanted to be a, a mortgage broker. And, you know, he and I have our differences. We're a different age um, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and he said, yeah, I'd like to be a mortgage broker. And I said to him, do you want an assistant? And he said, yeah, he said, get your license and let's do it. And um, that was the beginning, you know, and, and I've been in the industry for probably seven years now. And I've learned so much on the way, you know, I don't even like to call myself a mortgage broker. It's more of a mortgage practice because there's every day you're learning products change. They were here. They're not anymore. There's a new one different qualifications, different debt servicing, different components to finance that come and go on a daily basis. So really it's more of a practice than it is a brokerage, I assure you. Um, but that's how I got into it. But that, and you know, it's one thing that I like about you. It's your humility in saying that, because I think that you are in a field that regardless if you've been in it for 40 years or seven, you still need to always be learning because everything is, you know, it's always, um, it's dynamic, it's always changing. Yeah. Um, but the difference with you and someone who's been in 30 years, maybe, is that you recognize that you're always learning. And I think that some 
uh, of the um, more experienced or more seasoned, sometimes what we come across is they're complacent in, in mm -hmm. you know, their practice. So uh, what I like about you is that you do go get, you know, this extra information, this extra research, this extra this, because you don't think you know everything and you're, you're humble. And that's, Thank you. you know, it's a big thing. And also what I like that you said is that, um, you know, the fact that you educate and don't influence, so you're not driven by the, the quota of, of whatever you have to close mm -hmm. because you must believe in abundance. Very much, very much. And, you know, a part of me that really aligns with abundance is referring out and outsourcing what isn't for me. And that includes part of my personal life, you know, household chores, getting my lawn mowed by somebody else, doing whatever I need to do to put me in my best state, you know, and, and if looking at my long lawn, uh, you know, gives me a headache, I have someone mow it. I have someone do my social media. I'm not great at it. I'm great at brokering and learning how to be a better broker, um, you know, and, and outsourcing and, and your personal and professional, particularly an entrepreneur, it's, it's the same. You know, if your personal life has its, its trials and tribulations, it's going to affect your professional life. So I do everything I can to be in my best possible state at all times. I don't overbook my schedule. I always make sure I get a good night's sleep and I have some kind of nutrition. You know, it keep me my best self. It's absolutely vital. Like, isn't that so interesting how the world has really changed? You know, when you make that kind of statement, Lee, the world has really changed because that used to be the, the you know, it, it can be work hard, play hard, right? Um, and and what I hear you saying is that the same thing that you're looking to deliver and encourage with other people in one area you're, you're doing for yourself. I mean, who knew that we'd be talking about finances as a group of independent, you know, financially secure women? And they're like, hey, how much sleep did you get last night? Do you know what I mean? Like these things, you know, there's the circle that we look at now. You know, there's a circle, look at the different areas of our lives. And I mean, I don't know about you guys. I don't have a desire or a new idea. I think it's a goal of mine to have 25%, 25%. Like I'm not equal in each area because I'm at a different stage in my life, at a different stage. Like, you know, I might, tomorrow I'm going to go visit, you know, my daughter. And so, you know, that's going to be a lot more play. And today I might work till eight o'clock or nine o'clock. It doesn't matter. I think the flexibility and the belief that that we're putting ourselves as part of our career goals is so incredible. And I know that was one of the things that you talked about outsourcing and personal development and, you know, good for you. I just had a conversation with someone this morning. They're like, I'd love to do your business, but I can't, I don't want to do social media. I'm like, have you heard of social media experts? They're awesome. <laughs> right. And really they could do it in 20 minutes and it would take me three hours and I don't even want to, they're better at it than I am. Why on earth would I want to do that when I could take some training on debt service, you know, and, and um, uh, reverse mortgages that are coming out and CMHC training. CMHC is an excellent program to provide housing for Canadians, but it's in depth. You really have to know your material. I can say hands down that CMHC training is better for me than social media training. I'm happily to outsource that to a young professional. Gratefully, gratefully outsource it. And that's like, that's a notion that someone told me a few years ago. It's um, look at how much you made in your year, mm -hmm. average that on how many hours you work. Mm -hmm. And that is your worth. So establish mm -hmm. your worth. And then, you know, let's say a cleaning lady. Mm -hmm. I, or I don't have one yet. <laughs> I'm still the maid. <laughs> you know, when someone says, oh, I'll put a hundred bucks a month and she's coming to clean four hours. And some people will say it's expensive as opposed to other people will say it's really cheap because four hours at my rate is like $900. So yeah. do I want to spend those four hours? But, That's and right. I'm just thinking that, you know, I, I find that it's the typical example, the one that we push away the longest, the cleaning lady, <laughs> but we would all want her. Um, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> uh, besides that, 
So I, it, you know, it shows that you're in finance because you have that thinking about like, why would it use 20 minutes versus three hours when I can invest in other places? Mm -hmm. But changing a bit subjects here, you talked uh, in the pre-interview about different programs that you have for businesses that will help them grow, at, you know, businesses that are innovative. And can you talk a bit about that? Because I'm sure there's mm -hmm. entrepreneurs here that would really be interested in those different programs. Absolutely. Um, uh, one of my favorites is the Shred program. It's a program from the federal government um, and it will give and rebate um, either cash rebates and or tax credits to Canadian companies who innovate. It's Canada wide. It is in all industries, cannabis, beer breweries, wineries, pharma, energy, um, shoes, innovating better shoes. Um, foods, of course, you know, making a, a product extend the shelf life. So you have to do some innovation or, or say you had a restaurant and now you're doing retail. So now you've got to make your food goods um, and innovate the recipes so that, you know, your dumplings will freeze well and then reheat well without falling apart. So all of those types of innovations um, can get you a cash rebate and or a tax credit for time and salary and wastage you know it's one of the reasons that um you know companies are reluctant to innovate because they know they're going to have some potential losses you know and, and throwing out a whole vat of wine or beer or something is an enormous cost you know so this will help canadian companies grow and innovate um, and it's a great program and a referral partner i have um uh, they work on contingency. If there's no claim, you pay nothing. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And this is what they specialize in. They do it well. Some companies get six-figure rebates, hundreds of thousands in rebates. It's enormous, absolutely enormous. That kind of information is so just invaluable, you know, because I think particularly for entrepreneurs that kind of have a mindset of, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll work 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, 18 hours, I'll put in all my money, I'll put in the, the college this, I'll put in that. They tend to be all in people. Like when I think of an entrepreneur, I have a vision of someone at a you know casino going, I'm going all in on my life. I'm going all in on my life. And so we, they tend to be so focused on what they can do themselves. They forget, they don't even have resources. Like when you told me that, I was like, wow, that's just piece of information. And it also alleviates pressure for people, like the stress that people are under when they come up against having to make a change or innovate or have an idea. And they're like, I don't have the money. You know, I just don't have the money, right? So um, those kind of things are, are incredible. I, I know we're coming to the mm -hmm. close of where, um, you know, things are at and what you can offer people. So um, Leah, I want to kind of take it back to you a little bit. And what kind of, you know, are you an everybody person? Is there certain kind of people that you feel like you can help more than others? Are you, I know that you are, you know, it lists, you know, Lee Wright, commercial mortgage broker. Is that, you know, predominantly the kind of people that should be coming to you or being referred to you? Like, let us know how we can get people in front of you. So much gratitude. Thank you. Um, I am a licensed mortgage broker. I typically do specialize in commercial. However, recently I've started doing residential as well. Um, I had a commercial file recently where I had to take out equity of a couple of residences. So um, I've expanded my portfolio to in include uh, residential mortgages in the province of BC. Um, anybody who feels like they'd like to work with me would be great. Business owners are great. Um, if you'd like uh, some information on the SHRED program, great you know if your strata is in need of some remediation and there's it's just not going well with your strata council financing is an option up to 100 percent of financing is an option for any young professionals that are looking to buy a book of business in their specialized fields like a pharmacist or a lawyer or accountant that type of thing um, and would like to do it on their own you know they might not have family that could co-sign you know with traditional finance so this is a bit of an alternative lender that's got an excellent program to make a difference in the country that we all live in okay. i mean i just want to ask one question before i'm gonna let caroline wrap it up and so when you talk about dentists and doctors and does that fall into the does that book of practice because i notice a lot of people are in the spa industry or 
buying spas, anything with that have clients like that. Um, does that include for people in that area as well? I did have one of those that I tried to get financing for, and they had a three month uh, evacuation clause in their in their lease. Right. So that collapsed that one. If there was a strong enough lease, it, it'd be worth a look. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I just noticed a real rise in that lately. Mm -hmm. So, all right. When I, you know, um, I love that because I don't come from a family. Well, some of my family is very wealthy, but let's say I was raised by my mom. And if I would have wanted to start anything, I couldn't. I would have, you know, I <laughs> would have gone in collateral from our apartment, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I, I'm laughing, but it's kind of not funny because it did limit my choices at some point. Cause when you, you think, Hey, if I want to do this, if I want to do that, but you don't even know who to turn around to. Cause you're like, I was born, you know, in the wrong family. I heard that a lot or I said it a lot. That's probably why I heard it a lot. <laughs> but now I don't think that anymore. I was born where I should have been. But my point is, I absolutely love programs like that because it, you know, it kind of like level the playing field. There's different things you can do to level the playing field, but that's one of the ones that's really interesting. And uh, while to close this out, I will just say, Lee, I really appreciate meeting you. You're, you're such a great, per you, you have such a great personality and you're so calm and you have a soothing voice and you know your stuff, very, very intelligent. Um, I will ask you if people want to reach you, how would they do that? Um, on Instagram, I'm commercial mortgage broker. That's it, commercial mortgage broker. Awesome, awesome. So, and if someone doesn't have Instagram, do you have an email address you can give? Um, sure, lee.right at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. And uh, is there anything you want to add to close? Um, no, I just thank everybody for their time and their energy and uh, let's make an impact in this world. Let's make it all a better place. Thank you.